Now let's see how make or buy analysis works in practice. We're going to analyze the creation of course for data science. So imagine that you have to analyze for a consulting firm, whether it makes sense or not to produce online course devoted to data science or rather to buy it from external provider. We know a few things about the company. So it's located in Poland. They have 15 people on positions like business analyst and associate, three project managers and two directors partners. Every year, 50% of the people leave the company. We obviously have to train all new employees because this is a skill this company uses extensively. Now, a few things we know about the make option. So first of all, we know that the course will take 250 hours to prepare and on top of that 50 hours every year for modification. The delivery will take 30 hours each time and in one group you can have five people. On top of that, we know that the associate BA costs roughly 21 euro per one hour, whereas director can be estimated at 62 euro per one hour. When it comes to the buy option, we obviously can buy it and have it done by external provider. This would cost for every delivery 3.8 thousand per group and the group will have five people. Now, using this data, please try to estimate on your own in Excel, preferably how much it will cost in the make option and buy option, and try to compare and see which option is better, obviously given the perspective of 10 years. As always, I recommend to pause this lecture now, try to solve it on your own, and once you're done, move on to the next lectures, where I will show you the solution to this case study. So let's have a look at the solution. So please open a file attached to the lecture, which is called Make or Buy Offline Courses version 2. And here in the master sheet, as always, you will find a table of content where we put all the things we have in this file. So we're going to start by looking at the make option. We use the logic we have used in the previous case study. So we first calculate the number of times the course will be delivered. So as you can see in year one, you can see that it will be delivered four times. And then after that, in every year, it will be delivered two times. And this is due to the fact that we have assumed that the group will be small, so just five people. And we also know how many people we have to train. So in year one, we have to train everybody. So it's 100%. And then we assume that every year, 50% will be leaving the company. So it means half of the overall staff, which is 20. Therefore, we have 10. That's why we have a two deliveries that we have to do per annum. So 10 divided by five. In the make option, obviously, we have to prepare the content. So we first look at the cost of content preparation. So it's the many hours we have to devote. From the case description, we know that it will be 250 hours first year. And then every other year, it will be 50 hours. We assume one hour to be equal to 21 euro. That's why in the first year it will cost us 5,000 and then later on 1,000. So 12, it's the cost of content preparation. In row 16, we've got cost of delivering the course. So we look how many times we have to deliver the content, four year times in the first year and then later on two times per year. And then the cost of delivery is calculated by looking at the, again, number of man hours and the cost per one man hour. So it's 623 per one delivery. As always, we also have to calculate the value of man hours devoted to content consumption. So first we calculate in row 22, the man hours devoted to consumption. So it's 480 hours because we have 20 people in first year that are gonna take the course and then 24 hours per one person. After that, since year 2 to 10, we'll just spend 240 hours on content consumption because only half of the company will have to be trained in data science. Using this data, we can calculate in row 26 the value of man hours devoted to content consumption. So we take from row 20 to the total man hours and we simply multiply it by the cost per one man hour. This is an average over the whole company. So we take into account that not only business analysts and associates will be trained, but also partners and project managers. This means that in terms of the value of the time devoted to content consumption, we're going to pay 15,000 in year one and after that 7,000 each and every year. We also can calculate man hours devoted to content delivery. So it's the number of times the course will be delivered and number of man hours per one delivery. With all this data, we can finally sum it up and see how much money and time the make option costs. So in the case of the make option, it will be 23,000 in year one and then 10,000 each and every year from year two to year 10. So in row 35, you've got information and below you have the structure. So 5,000 in the first year will be cost of content preparation. Then cost of delivering the course, it's 2,000 and 1,000 in other years. 
and then value of mana was devoted to the content consumption 15,000 in year one and after that 7,000. And below we also have the total man hours devoted to the course in the make option. So it's 850 hours in year one and 350 hours every year after year one. So from two to 10. So that's in short when it comes to make option. In the next lecture, I'll look at the buy option. And once we are done with that, we'll compare the option and see which is better. So whether we make it or buy it. Now let's see how much it costs us to get the course to train everybody if we went for the buy option. So in sheet buy, you will see all the calculation we did. So again, we start with the number of times that the cost will be delivered. We take the things that we have calculated in the make option because they will be the same. So we're going to deliver the cost four times in year one. And after that, in year two, twice. And this will be the pace until year 10. The cost of delivering, we calculate by looking at the number of courses delivered. So the previously shown calculations and cost per one delivery, we know that it's 3,800. You can also look at the components, why it is so costly. One way or the other, it means that in terms of the cost of delivering the course, we'll have to pay 15,000 in year one and after that 8,000 every year. Man hours devoted to the consumption again will be the same as in the case of the make option. So we take them from there and we calculate the value of man hours devoted to the content consumption. Again, it will be the same as in the make option. This means that we can in row 25 calculate the total cost of the course in the buy option. So this is the direct cost of the course and also the value of man hours devoted to the content consumption. In other words, when it comes to the first year, we have to spend 30,000 and then after that 15,000 every year to get this course. And obviously here we mean the direct cost of the course and value of man hours devoted to the content consumption. In terms of the man hours devoted to the course, this will be just 480 hours in year one because we have to train everybody. And then after that in seconds and later years, it will be 240 hours. Now we'll get everything together from the make and buy option. And in the next lecture, I'm going to compare it and we're going to try to see what kind of conclusion we can get out of that. So let's have a look at the comparison of a make and buy option. So go to the sheet comparison. And here you're going to see that we have calculated the difference between the make and buy option. Since this is a cost, the minus should be treated in a positive manner. So it means that the make option is actually cheaper. So in year one, we would pay 23, then the buy option is 30. So roughly speaking of the rounding it up, it's 8,000 cheaper to go for the make option. Then in column T, we got total in nominal values. So in terms of nominal values in 10 years, if we go for the make option, we will have to pay 110 and for the buy option, 166,000. So if we go for the make option, we're actually going to save 55,000. Obviously, we can also do the NPV. So in row 10, you've got the NPV for 10 years. So the NPV for the make option is 81,000. And then the buy option is 120,000. So in terms of the net present value, the difference, which in normal value was 55,000, is equal to 39,000. And again, the very same thing we have for five years. So even if we look at a very short perspective, so five years, it is cheaper to go for the make option rather than to buy the course from independent external providers. So in other words, if we just look at that, it would mean that uh, we would go for the make option as it gives us some significant savings. There is only one thing that we did not consider here on purpose, and sometimes it should be considered. This is the difference in man hours. So in the case of the make option, we will spend 850 man hours in the year one, whereas buy option is 480 hours. So we're going to spend roughly 400 man hours more. And then every year, roughly 100 hours more for the make option. So if your company has a very high utilization, then actually the make option may be a problem because you will not have the man hours to deliver the course. And then you would have to go for external provider. So um, have a look at that and try maybe to do exactly the same calculation, but taking into account that we actually could sell those man hours to external customers. So do the exactly the same calculation, make or buy analysis. So have a look at that. And I would suggest that you try to account for the man hours that we could uh, sell to our customers and check whether in this case the make option will be better or maybe the buy option will be a better choice. 
I will attach to this lecture also a solution to this small modification to this case study as well. In some cases, the make option, despite being more expensive, is still something you should go for. And here I'm going to discuss briefly when it makes sense. So the first reason is kind of obvious. So there is no content on the right level. And this is actually one of the main reasons why we had to most of the things we teach our people do on our own. So we had to create content that was not available on the market. The other thing is also a valid point. So your standard may differ from general standards and you want to use the teaching system also as a standardization tool. And this quite often happens in things related, for example, to financial modeling, where a specific person may have a different way of presenting financial data than you need for your team. So you would rather build your own course where you teach your own standards. So the team has exactly the same standard already learned as a part of the courses on financial modeling. As you might remember, we also said that in the case of making the courses, you have a lot of fixed costs of content preparation, content creation. Therefore, if you're growing drastically in terms of people, the calculation that you do currently may not reflect the fact that in long term, this will be a better option. So if company is growing drastically in terms of people, the make option will at some point be more favorable, although now given how many people it may seem to be too expensive. So let's look also at the midterm and long term perspective. In many cases, you would also do your own courses because you want to keep um, the knowledge to yourself. And the courses you create help you capture that. In those cases, obviously, you should not make those courses publicly available. This is one of the reasons why it is very difficult to find something which is prepared by McKinsey, Siang, and other famous consulting companies because they keep it in just for internal purposes. Another reason why you should go also into your own content is when there are no specialists in a specific area. So what you end up with is, let's say, not the right level of expertise that you need for your people. So in these cases, you quite often have to learn a specific area to prepare the content. And this is quite often the case when you want to enter, for example, a new area that has not been covered by other companies. And finally, you may have some legal reasons and these where you want to create your own content that you can share with your customers and also make them part of your teaching system. So have a look at those reasons and whenever you are making a decision on whether to make or buy a course, take also those things that we have mentioned here into account. So not only look at the financials, but also see whether one of those things is not a valid point in order to tip you in favor of creating your own content.